welcome to this vlog. So, unfortunately, I was exposed to a friend who had COVID, and now I'm getting pretty sick. I don't know if you can tell my voice, but I'm getting pretty sick. So, I've just decided to isolate and stay at home. There's no use getting other people sick, you know. It, it might just be a cold or the flu. What I have, because um, I'm testing negative at the moment for COVID, but I don't know. I just don't see any point in risking it, so I'm going to stay home. So, yeah. I'm bringing you along to hang out with me because I might go a little bit insane. So, um, yeah, we're going to hang out in ISO together. I don't know, I think it'll be nice to just, like, get a few things done and have some time to myself. Um, I'm a pretty busy person. I'm always on the move doing something. So I have a few new books that I have gotten over the past couple of weeks that I would like to read that I haven't had time to and like do some art i have some videos that i would like to film like for reels and stuff like that um because i don't visibly look sick I don't, I don't think so i think i'll be fine to like do some filming as well if i feel up to it but yeah you're just gonna hang out with me and um vibe with me <laughs> So I just had a shower, I'm going to quickly do some skincare. I've been really productive today, and that's crazy. I love how it takes for me to get sick, to actually, like, get stuff done at home, you know what I mean? just feel like I'm always so busy, I'm always doing stuff, um, like, out of the house, or I'm doing stuff for the business, or I'm just, like, out, you know, living my life, which is great don't get me wrong i'm grateful for all of those things and i love being busy but like i think sometimes i forget to just like chill like i forget to have my alone time um which is something i enjoy i love being alone i love having time to myself and sometimes like that gets neglected when I'm really busy. But yeah, like I literally wrote a list of stuff that I wanted to get done today because I knew that I would have to isolate because my friend had COVID and I'm sick. So I was like, well, I'm obviously going to have to isolate at least for the weekend or if I do end up getting COVID, you know, for longer because I'm not risking getting other people in my life sick. But yeah, I knew that I would be isolating for a while. So this morning I woke up and I wrote myself a list of stuff that I wanted to get done. Even just simple things like literally journal work out meditate literally just like drink coffee like you know what i mean or myself like a list of stuff that i wanted to do for me today um and i'm just i'm just getting that list done so i worked out i did my journal journaling i read a bit of my book i sat had coffee read a bit of my book um tidied up my room um just getting stuff done so now I'm going to plan a couple of reels, I think, because I don't, like, look sick. Like, I feel sick, but I don't look sick, so I can get away with making a couple of videos while I feel like it, because, you know, I'm sick, but I'm not, like, you know, super unwell to the point where I can't do stuff. So I may as well just get a bunch of reels filmed, because... Like I said before, I'm always so busy and I like to get a couple of reels out. Like, I like to get a reel out once a day, you know, just to keep it flowing, to be consistent. Um, So, I'm going to film a bunch of them now. And I'll show you the process. And then, I think later on, I'm going to maybe do some painting and like listen to some records or something like that. So yeah, just a chill one. All right, so I have a little activity for us. I have these cards, they're called Soul Seeker cards, 100 questions for deeper connection. So I'm gonna pull a couple of these cards and answer what they say and you can feel free to answer them too if you wish. I have used these cards before. They're, they're good for like journaling, um, like, some days I don't really have much to write, but I still want to journal. Um, so like I'll just pull a couple of the cards and answer what they say. And usually it's just good to just like have 
you know, some questions for me. Um, I think it's important sometimes to just have some of that deep reflection. Um, just to like center yourself and sort of, you know, just understand where you are mentally that day. You know what I mean? I, I think it's important. I love it. It's a part, it's a part of my uh, daily routine now. So just give them a bit of a shuffle. All right. First one. Some of these questions are a little weird. So hopefully we get a good one. Are you scared of conflict? Not necessarily, I guess it depends on the conflict. I'm not a very confrontational person. I don't like like fighting with people, arguing, arguing with people. But in the sense of like, if something is bothering me, then I will confront someone about it, but I'll do it in a gentle way, in a way that's like, just communicating how I feel and that way we can like just discuss it. I don't, I, I don't believe that, I believe that violence is never the answer to things um, and that's why I'm not, I'm not scared of conflict but I don't like conflict. I don't think a lot of people do but I'm not one of those people that goes out and seeks conflict um, but I'm not scared of it. Alright, there's a question on the back too. What has been hard for you to forgive? Ooh, these are deep. What's been hard for me to forgive? I'd say I'm a, I'm a fairly forgiving person, and that's true. I, I forgive people who hurt me and people who hurt me over and over. I'm very forgiving. I'm very, I'm very gentle in the way that I approach people because people make mistakes and I'm aware of that because I've been in that position in my life where I make mistakes and sometimes make mistakes over and over and that's why I'm forgiving to people. I think one thing for me that has been hard to forgive though is people who hurt me and don't acknowledge it. I think acknowledging when you've hurt someone or acknowledging how your actions hurt people that's a big thing and I think it's hard to forgive someone when they've hurt you when they don't acknowledge that you know what I mean because like I said before everyone makes mistakes we're, we're human and that's just how it goes sometimes your actions are gonna hurt people even if it's like not intentional um, sometimes that's just how it goes but I think if you are actively communicating and telling people how you feel and apologizing and being aware for your actions um then it's easier to be forgiven you know what i mean see how these cards make you think this is why they're good for journaling because it, it's it heals something deeply you know you get to have a conversation with yourself about things that may not always come up i think it's really healthy do you dwell mostly in the present past or future so I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I do try my hardest to stay in the present. Being in the present is very important to me because to me the past and the future doesn't exist. They're just memories. The future isn't here. The future just doesn't exist and the past is just memories and thoughts and the present moment is the only thing that's actually that actually exists that might sound a bit crazy but it's true the present moment is the only thing that exists the past is gone it's just a memory it's just a thought it's just an idea it's just in here and the future is just not here yet you know what i mean so i guess sometimes it's easy to fall into a mindset of not so much dwelling on the past i don't think i dwell on the past but i think i do think of you know i think it's just natural to think about things that have happened to you um, because a lot of the things that have happened to you make you who you are and sort of like create the way that you react to things so I'm not saying I, I don't think I dwell on any any of those necessarily but I think I do tend to think about the past a lot more than I should um, but I think that's I think that's pretty natural though 
everyone goes there. Who is the most important person in your life? I have a lot of very important people in my life. My family, my parents, my brothers, they are like the most important people in my life. My cat, <laughs> Biggie, he is one of the most, maybe even the most important person in my life. I don't know, I feel like everyone in my, if I, if you're in my life and you're my friend, you're important to me. In all different spaces, I don't hold anyone to like a higher level than the other, you know what I mean? I, I love all of my people, um, is with my whole heart, that's just how I am. Do you want to know when you will die? Why? I don't know, I feel like it would be kind of cool to know like when you die or how you die, just so that you can like... I don't know, make the most of everything? I don't know, that's also something I've been thinking about a lot recently, like tomorrow is never promised, it's not promised, you know what I mean? As I was saying before, the future doesn't exist and tomorrow is not promised for you. And I know that's really deep and that sounds morbid, but it's it's so true though, so I think it's um interesting to think about though, like if you knew when you were gonna die, what would you change in your life? Like, if you knew that you're going to die tomorrow, like, what would you do about that? Um, if you knew you're gonna die cozy, warm in your bed when you're a hundred, like, still, what are you gonna do in your life? I don't know. I think it's interesting to think about. I like to think sort of existentially like that. It's interesting. Okay, the back says, "When is it brave to walk away, and when is it cowardly?" I think it's brave to walk away when something isn't serving you anymore because either you keep getting hurt by it whether it's like a relationship or a friendship just a situation and it could be anything a, a job something's not serving you anymore and you acknowledge that you either keep getting hurt by this thing or it's just not what you need or want in your life anymore i think that's brave to walk away from because sometimes you out, well, not sometimes, you outgrow things all the time, right? You grow out friendships, you grow out relationships and jobs and places. It's just normal, you know, as a human being, we adapt and grow in all sorts of, all sorts of situations and it's, you know, normal to go outgrow things and walk away. So I think it's brave to walk away from things when you acknowledge that it's not serving you anymore and that it's ready, to, you're ready to like move away from it. I think it's cowardly to walk away from something when going back to what I was saying before when you know you did something wrong and you're not willing to acknowledge that you did anything wrong and you would rather just walk away and leave that person hurt and leave that situation unresolved you'd rather just walk away and just like you know never fix a situation I think that's sort of cowardly, in my opinion. I mean, I know it's everything's, everyone is different and every situation is different. Obviously, sometimes it's just better to walk away and not resolve. Sometimes it just happens like that. You walk away from people and situations without it ever being resolved, without you ever knowing how or why. But I think from my ex life experience that I have, um, I think it's cowardly to walk away from something when you haven't given it the time to resolve or you haven't you know communicated when you haven't communicated about that situation when you haven't given it any energy to resolve you know what i mean i feel like it's hard to explain but yeah have you made a good life for yourself i'd say yes I'd say every single day I'm actively working towards being a better person and creating a better life for myself. Um, a good life to me is being happy and healthy and surrounded by love and I'd say that I have a good life and I'm creating a good life for myself so yeah. I say I have, yeah. Are you made more of your memories, your beliefs, or your hopes? I'd say that it's a huge mixture of all three. 
as I was saying before, your memories are sort of they're the they're the experiences that you've had, and your memories are what create sort of who you are and how you react and experience different situations because that's just how it goes. So I'd say I made a lot of my memories, but I'm also made of my beliefs and my hopes because I have a lot of desires out of this life. I have a lot of things that I want to accomplish in my life and experience, but I also have a lot of morals and I have a belief system of how things go. So I'd say I'm a mixture of all three, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't hold my memories on a huge pedestal, probably as much as I did when I was younger, because when you're young, you sort of, you're learning how to be a person and who you are as a person outside of everything you've ever known. So when you're starting out as an adult, you know, it's sort of, you're just in your memories, that's how you reflect things. But I think now when I look back on my memories, I'm not as harsh as I probably was when I was younger. Because now I just look back on my memories, even the bad ones, I look back as it as an, a learning experience. Because at the end of the day, the things that you've gone through, they create who you are. And I think it's also about mindset, about how you look at that. Because everyone has shit that's happened to them, and sometimes, you know, sometimes it's a lot worse than others, but for me, I choose to look back on those experiences as a lesson, even if it's really hard to, because that's how I want to train my brain to be. Would you rather touch or be touched? Both. I don't know, physical touch is a, a, a big thing for me. I love hugging people, holding hands. If I had to pick one, I'd probably prefer to be touched more than to touch. I am a hugger. I love hugging people. I love connecting with people through touch. But also, I like getting touch reciprocated back to me too. Um, I don't know, I think I need to do like my love languages test again. I haven't done it in years, but I want to know like my love, like where I sit with my love languages. Like, because I feel like physical touch is a, uh, a big one of my love languages, but I also think that like quality time is as well. So I don't know, but if I had to pick one, it would probably be touched. So it's night now. But I'm still going to film those reels I spoke about earlier. I just needed to chill out for a bit. Um, I usually do them at night anyway. I just, I don't know. I feel like I'm more inspired at night to do them. So, yeah, I'm going to film a bit of that process so you can see sort of the creative process. I have a few outfits already in my head sort of planned for it. <laughs>